This is Ling270, Language, Technology, and Society. In this module, we are examining modern language technologies, including machine translation. In this lecture, we're going to look at Bernard Vacqua's translation triangle and look at various methodologies and approaches for performing machine translation. As we do this, we will encounter various other issues which we will address along the way, including mechanical dictionaries, parsing, generation, analysis, and interlinguas. Let's get started. In 1976, the French machine translation researcher Bernard Vacquois published a study called Automatic Translation, in which he looked at different approaches to the problem of machine translation that had been enacted between the beginning of machine translation research in the late 1940s and early 1950s up until the present day at the time of writing, which was the mid-1970s. In this report, Vacqua included this diagram, a triangle. So in the triangle, Vacqua assumes that there is a source language, which you see in the uh, over here in the upper left, a target language, which you see over here in the upper right. And the goal of machine translation is to get from the source language representation to the target language representation. So if you're going to do translation, the question, one of the first questions that comes about is how much analysis are you going to perform as you perform the translation? And Vacqua calls, uh, uses the terminology of various levels. So level zero, level one, level two, level three, level four, etc. And the idea here is that a person or a machine could attempt translation at a very shallow level. So essentially performing word for word translation. So at level zero, one could imagine that the translator, either a human or a computer, takes the first word in the source language sentence, looks up that word in a dictionary, and simply writes out on the target side the first word sense, the first definition in the target language from the dictionary. Or if there's multiple, you could choose the first one, you could choose an arbitrary one, or you could potentially have a word sense disambiguation module to choose which one to select. And this is the most basic kind of machine translation, simple word for word substitution. The very earliest machine translation models in the late 1940s uh, were essentially utilizing this. And as machine translation research really got started in the early to mid 1950s, these were the first real systems, word for word uh, substitution systems. More sophisticated models would involve deeper and deeper levels of analysis. So analysis is the process of starting with a representation of a source language sentence and transforming that source language representation into a more abstract representation, such as a parse tree. So we'll go, we'll switch to the whiteboard in a moment, uh, and I'll go through in more detail what is meant by analysis. Uh, but 
after analysis, Vaqua said these later more sophisticated systems will begin by analyzing the source language into some intermediate representation and then transforming that intermediate representation from a representation in the source language to some equivalent or roughly equivalent representation in the target language, at which point generation goes from the intermediate representation to the surface form. Vaqua also recognizes that one could in principle, although not in practice, do an perform analysis all the way down to an ideal level of understanding, some truly language independent interlingual representation. So this is what Warren Weaver was referring to in his tower analogy, is the idea of taking a source sentence and analyzing it so deeply that we've reached an ideal level of interlingual understanding. That's what he's referring to when he talks about people in a common basement communicating with one another. And then from that ideal level of understanding, one could generate back to the target language representation. This is called the Vaqua Triangle and has been very helpful and was widely used throughout the 20th century to refer to uh, different machine translation programs and was used to recognize where on this diagram did various machine translation research uh, coincide. So let's switch over to the whiteboard and go through each of these in more detail. So, this was a model produced by Bernard Vacqua, who was a French machine translation researcher working in the 1970s at the time of this publication. So let's go through this in more detail. Let's say I have uh, a sentence in English. The red house, da, 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 da. something else. So a sentence that begins with the red house. And I want to translate this sentence into Spanish. So I could do a simple word for word lookup. So this, this would be the simplest level. So word for word direct transfer. So I begin with the and I go to my English to Spanish dictionary and I see that the can be translated as la. Okay. I don't know Spanish, so there may be a better version of the than la in this context, but we're going to uh, we're going to go with la. Next, we look up the translation for red and we see that uh, the translation is a particular word. Uh, I can't guarantee this is correct, but I believe it's Roja. Okay, next we look up the translation for house and find that it is Casa. So then we continue in this manner throughout the remit for the rest of the sentence. And this gives us a word for word direct translation of our English sentence into Spanish. So we find the red house translates into La Roja Casa. Now, if you know anything about Spanish or other Romance languages, 
you will know that there's a mistake in this translation. So the translation has the noun and the adjective in the order that we found them in the English sentence. But in Spanish, adjectives and nouns often have a different order than they do in English. So instead of la roja casa, we really should have la casa roja. So this is the model that we find at the top of Vacua's triangle. So we have the source, language, representation, by which I mean the sentence, and we want to create the target language representation, so the sentence, the translation of the source sentence. And we could begin by doing essentially no analysis and simply transferring through direct word-for-word -word lookup. So this is the shallowest level of the Vaqua triangle. So how could we do better than this? Well, we could do better by doing some sort of analysis. So we could do a morphological analysis, we could do a syntactic analysis, we could do a semantic analysis. Let's look at a syntactic analysis. So the syntactic analysis will help us a little bit uh, by dealing with this order of word, uh, dealing with this issue of word order. So, we have the red house, and we want to come up with its Spanish translation. Let's bring this phrase down here and analyze it, this sentence, this phrase, into its component parts according to its constituents in our description of English language syntax. So we could start by looking at the part of speech of each of these words. So the is a determiner or an article. So DT here stands for determiner. And determiner is the part of speech of the in my analysis. Next, we have red. So red is an adjective. I'm going to use JJ to represent adjective. I'm not making these up, uh, these acronyms up. I'm using existing acronyms uh, from an existing collection of parts of speech. So JJ stands for adjective. And adjective is the part of speech of red. Next, we have NN, meaning common noun. So house has as its part of speech NN. So the is the determiner, red is an adjective, house is a noun. Let's clean this up. And continue our syntactic analysis of this phrase. So that's what we're doing. What we're doing right now is we are performing a syntactic analysis or 
Another word for performing a syntactic analysis is parsing. So parsing is an NLP task, a natural language processing task in which we take a sentence and analyze the sentence using uh, what we know of the language into some syntactic representation, normally a tree of some sort. So we know that we can decompose uh, a sentence into its constituent parts. So red house uh, can be thought of as a noun phrase or a noun phrase lacking a determiner. For simplicity, I'm just going to call it an NP. And then the overall thing that we have here is a noun phrase. So NP stands for noun phrase. Okay, so we, this is called a constituency tree. And if this phrase were in a full sentence, then this would be a fragment of the entire tree. So let's assume that it is, that this is the subject of a sentence. Okay, so the red house is big. And then we would continue uh, doing the syntactic analysis. So is is a verb. Big is an adjective. Is big is a verb phrase. And finally, the sentence is made up of a noun phrase, which is its subject, and a verb phrase, which is the predicate. So this is a complete syntactic analysis of the sentence, the red house is big. So how does this relate to machine translation? Well, instead of doing a direct transfer, we can first do syntactic analysis, parsing. So let's draw an alternate version of the Vaqua triangle. So we have the source, and we want to produce the target. So we're going to perform syntactic analysis. And this will result in some sort of intermediate representation. And in this representation, we have the little tree that I just drew up here. Okay, so there's our tree. Here's our tree. This is the result of performing syntactic analysis on our source sentence. Now, this is an English tree, an English constituency tree. But what we need is the equivalent Spanish language constituency tree. And in the Spanish language tree, the adjective and the noun are going to be in a different order than they were in the English tree. So this is what we want to get. If we had this, then we could read off the leaves of the tree in a process called generation. To result in the target. So what do we need to get from the English tree to the Spanish tree? 
we need a transfer mechanism. Specifically, we need a syntactic transfer mechanism. The syntactic transfer mechanism would know the connections between English syntax and Spanish syntax. So if we had, let's look at just this, the fragment red house. The syntactic transfer mechanism would be aware of the fact that if you have a fragment that looks like this in an English sentence, you need to flip the order of the adjective and the noun in the equivalent Spanish fragment. So this is English, and this is Spanish. So I'll put a little number over here to show that this adjective is corresponds with this one over here, and this uh, noun corresponds to this noun over here, okay? And the translation of this noun, house, would be casa, and the translation of this adjective, red, would be uh, whatever the Spanish translation of red is that I said above, roja. Okay, and then after performing syntactic transfer, we would have a Spanish language tree and generate to determine the target language sentence. So this is a more sophisticated model of translation that can be seen in the Vagua triangle called syntactic transfer. So, so far in the Vagua triangle, we have a source language sentence. We want to produce the target language sentence that is its translation. We could perform direct transfer by performing word-for-word -word lookup. But that's generally not a great idea and generally won't give great real results. Alternatively, we could perform analysis resulting in a syntactic intermediate representation, a tree, and then perform syntactic transfer to result in an equivalent target language tree, and then perform generation to go from this intermediate syntactic representation in the target language to the surface form in the target language. So there's one more uh, model in the Vaqua triangle that I want to go over. And that is interlingua. So I want to be clear that interlingua has never been successfully done. No one, does, no one has ever created a truly language independent interlingual representation. But that's the goal of interlingua. The goal of interlingua is to do an analysis. So we start with the source to do the deepest possible 
analysis. So that what you end up with is a representation that contains all of the semantics of the source sentence. And it's all of the semantics in a language independent form. And if you had such a thing, if you could take your source sentence and do the deepest possible analysis so that the representation that you have is, is essentially equivalent to that of a polyglot who hears the source sentence and has a mental representation that could go to any of the other languages spoken by the polyglot. And then you don't have to do transfer because the representation is language independent. And so you would do a generation step from the interlingual representation to the target language representation, the source, the target language uh, sentence. And this is called an interlingual model. an interlingual machine translation model or process. Now, no one has ever done this. Various groups have gotten, have attempted it, usually for limited domains and limited language pairs, usually language pairs that are quite closely related. Now, it turns out that this idea of a deepest possible linguistic analysis to a language independent form is not a new idea. This actually goes all the way back to 17th century Europe. So in 17th century Europe, various intellectuals, including Francis Bacon, uh, Isaac Newton, Leibniz, uh, and many, many others uh, thought about this idea and imagined that coming up with a truly language independent representation uh, or a, a universal language, as they may have, may have called it, could solve many, if not all, of the world's problems. And many tried, uh, to various degrees of success, the most successful was still not very successful. It was essentially what we would call a semantic ontology. Um, so Wilkins and Leibniz created the most uh, robust versions. And yes, this is the same Leibniz that was instrumental in the creation of calculus. So uh, there's plenty that you can look into. And if you're interested in this in more detail, uh, I would encourage you to look into my course that I teach regularly, uh, Ling, uh, Ling 415, uh, Machine Translation History and Applications. So here we have the complete Vakwa triangle, or as, as complete as we will be doing for our purposes here. So this is the Vakwa triangle. The Vakwa triangle is a model of various machine translation paradigms. Or approaches. Okay, so the Vakwa triangle says that when we're doing translation, we begin with a source language, we want to generate a target language. The simplest way of doing so would be to do direct word-for-word -word translation, simple substitution or transfer. Alternatively, one could do syntactic analysis, 
resulting in some sort of language-dependent tree or syntactic representation. The next step is syntactic transfer, which will take the tree representation in the source language and come up with an equivalent but distinct tree representation in the target language. From that tree representation in the target language, generation gives us the target language sentence. And finally, in theory, one could perform the deepest possible analysis resulting in an interlingual representation And from that truly language-independent interlingual representation, one could perform generation to construct the target language sentence. So this is the Vaqua triangle, which was a commonly used model uh, to describe various processes and paradigms of machine translation, primarily used throughout the 20th century.